is Gregory Bufidis, the Chairman and CEO of Project Council Media. I'm here in Paris covering the Georgetown Law Corporate Council Institute. It's the second year they've had the Institute. We were here last year, actually in London, covering the Institute, and it's our great pleasure to be here in Paris. Uh, my guest right now is Simon Cooper, who most of us know from his columns in the Financial Times, as well as his excellent books on football. Simon, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Um, at your luncheon address, you addressed uh, several points about uh, which I totally agree with uh, a certain prejudice there is against France. Uh, we have an office here in Paris. Uh, my wife and I spend a lot of time, and I, I identify with many of your points. You want to elaborate on some of those remarks? Well, what I was trying to say is that Almost everyone in the world has an idea of France. People think they know France. Christine Lagarde said this morning this image of berets and baguettes and also throw in some adultery and people think they understand France and then they think it's a backward country. Used to be the center of the earth, isn't any longer. France needs to catch up with the modern age. That's the usual series of cliches about France. What I'm saying is that France is actually a very successful modern country. They're determined to remain cutting edge. So, for example, this idea they refuse to speak English is outdated and false. French people are desperate to learn good English. French politics, French economics, are in many ways, is much more intelligent than ours often. Um, the, they foresaw the quagmire that the Iraq war would become because they'd experienced that in Algeria. They never gave out subprime mortgages. I mean, I told the story at lunch that um, when I applied for a mortgage here, I was sent by my bank to a cardiologist, and this cardiologist turned me inside out and he didn't even want to tell me what he'd found. And I said, look, Doc, am I going to die? And he, he just said, Savas, Savas, and he pushed me out the door. And I realized that what the bank was trying to do was to see, was I going to live long enough to pay a 25-year mortgage? And so that's the sort of caution and seriousness of French finance, as opposed to the sort of cowboy nature of British and American finance in recent years. So the idea that France needs to learn from us, I think, is very questionable. But that is the main idea in the English-speaking world. You've been living and have been based in France now, or in Paris actually, for how long? Nearly 10 years. So you believe that really France has a much more advanced economy, that the business community is actually quite sophisticated? They're different from us, but they're just as smart in a different way. You've written a number of books. Um, I've read actually two of them. Um, and the most recent is a book called uh, Soccernomics. Could you kind of give us an overview of what you cover in the book? Well, Soccernomics says soccer is a really dumb business. It's been really badly run. And it tries to take the view, tries to explain why it's been badly run, tries to explain why soccer isn't even a business, as people think it is, because the clubs don't exist to make money. The clubs exist to win prizes which they mostly fail at, but suddenly almost none of them in the whole world make money. And then to say, how could they do it a bit better, be a bit smarter, looking at uses of data. And I was inspired partly by looking at the US, where in baseball, as you know, data has taken over. And I've got to know Billy Bean, who was the sort of founder of the use of data in modern baseball. And he's, he's a big soccer nut. So I've talked to him a lot and to other people about how soccer can learn from baseball and become sort of a more intelligent game. The FIFA controversy scandal, whatever you want to call it, do you have any comments or takeaways on this? Well, FIFA is a totally unaccountable organization. They do what they like. They don't tell us. They don't care what we think. There's nobody telling them, no, you can't do that. And I think that might now slowly start to change because the big sponsors are getting very embarrassed by the corruption and mess. So Coca-Cola and Emirates and Adidas have spoken out. And I think they're going to have a quiet word with Sepp Blatter, the president, and say, look, in your last term, let's clean things up a bit. And so you can go out as Mr. Clean, and we sponsors won't be so embarrassed. Simon, I appreciate you taking the time today and your schedule to meet with us. Thank you. This is Greg Bafidis, the founder and CEO of Project Council Media. Thank you for joining us.